So this past week, I had time to go ahead and start watching two new release films. First one was Prey, which is the newest Predator movie. It's a Predator prequel directed by the director of 10 Cloverfield Lane. I was beyond hyped for that one because Dan Trachtenberg's an excellent director, and this movie just looked great. I was, I really thought this movie was going to be really, really good. And then I purchased everything everywhere all at once on Blu-ray, and I did check it out, and I was really excited to watch that movie, so today I'm going to give you both reviews on them, because, you know, it's now August, there's so many movies on streaming services, so little time to create so many videos, and so I do have to combine these, so I'm sorry for that, but before I give you my thoughts on Prey and Everything Everywhere All at Once, please take a moment to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, and comment down below, what is your opinions on both of these movies, I want to know all that and more down below, and with that said, let's get things started talking about Prey. And Prey, unfortunately, does not live up to the hype at all. This movie was not very good. And I could totally tell it's definitely because I'm biased to this. The Predator movies, I reviewed Predator. I After watching that one, I didn't even get into the mood to watch any of the other ones before this movie. So that's the only one I saw. But just by these two movies alone, I learned that I'm really just not a fan of Predator I'm not a fan of Prey. I don't think I'm going to be a fan of any movies in this franchise. And so, there is some good things in this movie. First off, the cast is kind of a little stiff. There's some people that are really stiff. And I do get the criticism that people are coming out saying, Oh, well, it was a bit confusing because why would they just speak in English when they're Comanche? And that... I thought that was a stupid criticism at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, if they'd just spoken Comanche, it'd probably make a lot more sense. But then, also, the performances, occasionally they're stale. Most of the time, they're really good, especially Amber Midthunder in the role. But it's just, you know, they're, she's a little off sometimes. Everyone's a little off in this movie. There are a couple really cool scenes, though, with the Predator being this killer, and kind of, it kind of gets a little old, because this whole final half hour of the movie is, we finally get the Predator, and then it's Predator action, Predator action, Predator action. It gets really old, especially because I wouldn't necessarily say I was bored by this one like I was bored with the original, but again, I would just have to say that even though it's easily watchable, it's definitely a watchable movie. I didn't hate it. I just gotta say it's more mediocre than anything. It was cool to watch sometimes, you know? And all the cool to watch scenes were like at the beginning where the Predator was. It gets a bit overdone at times. And the, you know, the beginning of when the Predator is here was pretty cool. There's a whole scene in the forest with ashes that was pretty cool. That was one of the best scenes of this entire franchise. But again, this movie was just mediocre. That's what this movie is, is mediocre. And again, I'm biased because I don't really like the Predator movies very much. But I thought this one could do better. And it was just another Predator movie that was kind of overdone. And, you know, it's a short movie. It's easily watchable. But it just feels like it went on too long at the end with the predator and it gets kind of boring when you just have predator fighting person person fighting predator for the whole final half hour and i think where my issues come in with this one is the writing here isn't very good there are multiple times like if this character is so clever if she's so smart why didn't she just do this and like about i'd say when the stuff finally starts happening because the first half hour of this entire movie was kind of really slow. It was really slow starting. And again, like I said, it's easily watchable. I didn't hate it. It just gets... It wasn't really boring. That was honestly entertaining at times. But it also starts out a bit slow. So this is kind of... And like I said, you don't really get the Predator until the final half hour. And so, like, the final half hour is overdone with Predator stuff. It would be cool if it was sprinkled throughout the entire movie at the beginning. But, you know, it still kind of worked. The beginning kind of worked here. I mean, what I was talking about was the writing here. Like, when she finally starts fighting the Predator, they just go off on a thing, meet the what they call white men in this one. They meet them. 
and then it goes off on an entire side quest, and it feels kind of random for where this movie was going. Now, it did make me go, yeah, that's kind of neat, but it did feel kind of random, and there's so many plot holes, so many messy writing, that writing was kind of a big problem here. The pacing was also a bit odd, and it, like I said, I never was necessarily bored by this one. I just felt that it was a bit odd the way that it was written, and the way that it was paced, but, you know, there were some cool, cool action scenes, but when the Predator's on there, it does get a little too overdone, and this finale, finale wasn't cool at all, I, I didn't like this finale at all, the, her big battle with the Predator, I just didn't find any emotional weight to it at all, overall, Hulu, I don't think is a great streaming service when it comes to its original content, I don't, last year, we had Boss Level, which was their big release, didn't like it, then there was Run, didn't care much for it. Then there's this, and I don't care much for it. For the Predator prequel, Prey, I'm going to give it a C, a 5 out of 10, and 2.5 and stars. This movie was just extremely mediocre. It was fine. There's some fine moments, but at the end, it just made me feel left empty. And this movie, you know, it's not necessarily anything I'd say, oh, you got to go see now, but I have a feeling that people that love the Predator movies, that, real, that think the Predator movies are great, and I could totally tell that this one's definitely bi biased. And plus, it is fine. It wasted a whole night. I could just sit down and watch this movie. So I do say, go check this movie out on Hulu if you want. If you're not a big fan of the Predator movies, you might not want to. But this is just my take. Now on to everything, everywhere, all at once, and I know what you might be thinking. Well, Zach, if you didn't like Prey, because that was a really well done, criticized movie, are you going to like this one? And the answer is, yes. Yep, 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 yep. This movie, I definitely compare it to Nope, because Nope was a movie that I really loved. But then, I don't really know if that was just because of the theater experience for the one-time thing. But I can compare it to Nope because of the experience I had. Because at times, this movie was a bit too much, and I couldn't tell if I was loving it or not. Because there was definitely also times that this film dragged. But, you know... It's weird, because I didn't see this one in the theater. I saw this one at home, and yet I still felt captured by this one. This one was a better movie than Nope. This was one is one of the best movies all year. And as in terms of actual movies I compare it to, I compare it to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Like, that is a very solid comparison, because they're both very creative. They're both very strange and weird and have an interesting have an interesting view on things, and it's pretty neat. Now, I did, I've been saying for a while, oh, I'm gonna make a review on Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, probably never gonna happen, just throwing it out there, but I didn't much care for that movie. This movie, I absolutely loved. It was awesome. Let's get started talking about the cast here, and this cast here is awesome. Michelle Yeoh is amazing in this movie. From the first hour of this movie, which is a big setup, but it also really works. We'll talk about the pacing in a minute. But this whole first hour in the movie, her performance just had me laughing. She portrays a mother that's also relatable, but also kind of of a complete dirtbag. But then she's also kind of funny, and I laughed a lot. Ki Hoi Kun? I don't know how to say his name, I'm sorry. But um, he's the husband. I thought he was awesome, too. He plays this quirky performance, and the way he keeps switching from character to character is pretty awesome. Michelle Yeoh did great, but she didn't switch from character to character. The person who kept switching from character to character was that guy. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to butcher it again, but it was still awesome. I mean, you know this cast is great when freaking Jamie Lee Curtis is just in this as a side role. And I thought she wasn't even going to be in this movie that much. But she was awesome. This whole cast portrays every emotion. They're great. This whole cast is just fantastic. Now let's talk about the pacing. I did tease that a little bit. And this pacing, at first, I thought this was just going to be the entire movie in, a, in the office building. But then they left. And I realized that this movie is the most creative film I've ever seen. The way it's done, it's not only just beautiful, but it's also awesome. It's shocking. It's really just a beautiful movie. And the way they created it, 
it's beautiful. This pacing, this first hour was kind of just like an introduction to how things worked. And I did find it a little weird when suddenly, when she's with her husband and daughter, oh, now she knows how to control everything. But it was all interesting. Now, I made that comparison to Nope, because Nope, things happen in that movie where I was constantly like, do I like that? Do I not like that? I couldn't tell if I liked it or not. But now that I like it, now it's mainly when the film ends is when I could realize what I think of this one. And this one was just interesting. The pacing was great. The action in this movie is absolutely bonkers. I, I definitely noticed that it was... The, the, the film narrowed down. It kind of looked like an old martial arts movie in the action scenes. And it really, really looked cool. This action is very well choreographed. The performances are great. The pacing, it finds a way to keep you invested in this really odd way too. And one thing I really did love was the emotions. This ending kind of did fall flat a little for me, but then it fixed it with the emotions. And it's not necessarily 100% relatable, but you still feel it. I can always feel emotions even if they're not relatable 100%, but this one, I really just felt it. And again, that's back to the way they made this film, the way it's beautiful, the way it's executed, the way it's paced, the way the action was, like... Wow, these characters are just awesome. This mom character of Michelle Yeoh was just extremely unlikable. And by the end of this, they made her great. Now, I do have a few criticisms. I wouldn't necessarily call them criticisms. But, you know, they are things that help back my enjoyment. This film does drag sometimes. Like, there's good 30, 40, 30 to 45 minutes that I was like, oh, I love this movie. And then there's like a good... 15 minutes after that, that it's like, okay, when are we going to pick up again? Well, then when it picks up again, it's fine. So, you know, it's awesome when the movie picks up again. But that's not... And like I said, none of these really drag it down. But this movie also was a little long. Like, it didn't feel two hours. Like, the first hour was set up. And then you only get an hour and 20 of the thing. But this is also a good thing. Because it doesn't feel like they were rushing the setup. Or it doesn't feel like the setup was going too long. It feels like they had time to flesh everything out in a perfect way so yeah and it might even just be that it was really late at night watching this but this movie felt long and there was times where it dragged but it was still paced really well the performances were great the action was great and <clears throat> this isn't my favorite film of the year that's actually go to top gun maverick but this is a very close second this is one of the best movies i have seen all year now, I was genuinely thinking about going the low route, just giving this like the A minus, just four stars, but this is definitely an A, 9.5, four and a half stars, and a must see film. You gotta see this movie. Now, of course, when I say that, you might be like, oh, this is, you truly love this film, you're biased to this film. No, I'm not. This isn't like last year where this isn't gonna affect my life like No Way Home did, but this movie was just awesome. And I feel like the reason I gave it such a high score was because it was beautifully executed. It might not affect my life in like No Way Home did, which was my favorite movie of last year, to where I constantly thought about this movie. I was bared by the emotional weight in that movie. It's not going to do that, but I just can acknowledge how awesome, beautiful, and very close to perfect this movie was so anyways thanks for clicking on this video please take a moment to subscribe to the like button hit the bell and comment down below what did you think of prey and everything everywhere all at once i want to know all that down below and more i'm gonna watch light here here soon i only got three episodes left in peacemaker only one episode left in cobra kai season three so i got tons of videos coming for you but with that said thank you for watching this video and as always subscribe to join the nerd army peace out